Objects are everywhere in JavaScript, so it is important to be able to work with them as efficiently as possible. In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at some easy ways to work with key value pairs that make up objects. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. Objects are frequently used to hold data in JavaScript. In fact, many times you receive data in the form of JSON, which you convert to an object. However, sometimes it can be a bit tedious to extract and work with that data. In this tutorial, we are going to look at a couple of additions that came with ECMAScript 2017 that help us work with the data in objects. If you need a refresher on objects, I've included links to object tutorials that I've created in the past. In fact, I've included a link to an object playlist that has several tutorials on objects. And I've included that in the description section of this tutorial. Now, when it comes to working with data, arrays make that process much simpler. In fact, there are several methods for arrays that make it much easier to work with data. And you should explore these if you haven't done so in the past. And I'll include a link to a playlist for arrays as well in the description section. Now, since arrays are much simpler to work with, what if we could convert the key value pairs in objects to arrays? Well, that is possible with the static methods that are now available on objects. Let's take a look at them and then we will look at some examples. So there are three static methods available on object. The first one is keys. So we access it by entering object.keys and then we pass in the object we want to work on. And what that returns is an array of all of the keys of the key value pairs that are part of that object. The second one is dot values. And what that returns is an array of all of the values. And as you can see, it functions the same way. Object.values, and you pass in the object that you want to act on. And then finally, if we need both the keys and the values together in array, we can do that using object.entries. Pass in the object, and it returns an array of arrays. So each element in that array is an array that consists of the key and the value. Now keys has been around for some time, but values and entries were added with ECMAScript 2017. And with all three of these together, it makes it working with data and objects simpler. So let's look at some examples. Now here I have an object. And the purpose of this object is just keep track of students and the score they received. And we're using the email address of those students to keep track of that. Now, what if I wanted to then begin working with this data? How would I do that with an object? Well, let's look at how we would do that with an object first. And then let's look at what these methods can do for us. So first off, let's say I want to sum the scores. I want to get a, a total for all of them. So I will set up a sum variable. And then we can use a for in loop to loop through all of those key value pairs within the object. This will allow us to loop through those. Then as we loop through them, we will update the sum variable like this. This will allow us to access the value because right now the val variable is set to the key for each of those key value pairs. And so this will allow us to access that value and add it to sum. So that's how we could get the sum. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. We jump out. Let me refresh, open the console. And then if we enter sum, there we go, we got the total. Now that's great, that's not too difficult. But now let's say, well, I also want to get an average. 
Well, that adds to it, so I need to do more. So I need to keep track of a count, how many there are, so that I can compute an average. And I'll create a variable to store the average in as well. So each time through the loop, I need to increment count. And then once we're done with the loop, then I can figure out the average, something like this. And that works for getting the average as well. So now that works fine. But as we continue to want to do more things, it just gets more complex. So let's see what these new methods do for us. I'm going to comment this out. And what I want to do is I want to create an array of values so that I can just work with those values. So I'm going to call that scores. And I'll set that equal to object dot values. This is the static method we're using. And I need to pass in the object that I'm going to act on. So students. Let's go ahead and take a look at that as it is. So now if I display scores, you can see that we have an array of all of the scores that were obtained from that object. Now that makes it very easy to work with and much more flexible because we can do multiple things with this array. So let's say we wanted to get the sum. We could do something like this. We could use the reduce method of arrays. Now, once again, if you're unfamiliar with the reduce method, refer to that array playlist. There is a tutorial in there that talks about these array methods. Now, normally setting this up, I would use arrow functions, but I haven't done a, a tutorial on that yet. And so I'll use a regular function. But what this reduce function is going to do is reduce the array down to a single value. And we're going to tell it to do that by adding the values together in this way. And then I want to pass in an initial value. So that will give us the sum. So now we have the sum. Well, I don't know if that was much easier than what we did up here, right? It's a single line, but as far as ease, that I don't think that simplifies things much. But now let's say we want to get an average. We can now do that pretty simply like this. We don't have to add anything to our previous code. We just do another line of code to get the average. Let me refresh that. And there's our average. Now that's not all. Let's say we also wanted to get an array of those scores that we're passing. And right now we're considering 80 as passing. Well, we continue to work with our scores array, which we set up. So we can set up a passing array. And we can get all the scores that are passing using the filter method of arrays. Once again, I have to pass in a function. This is a higher order function. Reduce and filter are both higher order functions. And so they take a function as a parameter. And then it uses that function to determine what is returned. And once again, if these are completely unfamiliar with you, please refer to those previous tutorials. And what we're going to do is return all of those that have a value of 80. And so the way this is working, filter cycles through each element of the array. And it passes in each element into this variable. And so we simply check to see if that value is greater than 80. If it is, then filter causes that to be returned into this array. So passing becomes an array as well. So quick description of how filter works. So I save that, jump out. 
Now, if I look at passing, I now have an array of passing scores. So the idea is because we've converted this to an array, we can continue to work with that data. We don't have to go back to past code and modify it to get something else. So I like that. That's, in my opinion, ease of use. Now, before we leave this tutorial, all we've looked at so far are just the static method values. But let's say we wanted to get a list of all the keys. And those would be the email addresses. So we could do that like this. Object.keys. And then we pass in students. Also, let's say we wanted to have an array of all of the data. So we can work with all the data together. Well, then we could do something like this. Well, let me put that up here as well. Entries allows us to pull all the data out. So let's save those and we'll take a look at what we get. Oh, I put an S there. Save it again. There is an array of all the email addresses. And here is an array of arrays. If we open up that array, array, we can see that each element in the array includes the key value pair. So the email address and the score. So if we needed to work with that data together in an array, then entries would be the static method that we'd want to use. So those are some methods that allow us to work with data and objects much easier. Now remember, values and entries were added with ECMAScript 2017. Keys have been around for a while, but values and entries are new to ECMAScript 2017. So make sure that you are targeting browsers that support those if you plan to use them. All right, if you found that helpful, hit the like button. Also hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com for full courses and to support this channel. Thanks for watching.